19th of August 2023. This is one of that what a fuck moments. And it is about this blaming of whites for everything. Now, I will be playing you two video clips. And the one is from Gaten McKenzie and the other one is from Aikumalo. It's important that you listen to what they are saying because what they are saying is totally against the narrative that has been fed to this Sosa generation. And I know there's a lot of people that get quite excited when I refer to the Sosa generation. The reality is the racism narrative in South Africa are being driven and fueled by people that was not even alive under apartheid. The cabal had an evil plan with this Sasa generation. They were bred for a purpose and their purpose is destruction and chaos. That is what they were bred for. And anybody that speaks against their pre-programmed narrative is just simply wiped away by being called a racist or by being calling an apartheid apologist and things like that. The reality is South Africa is screwed. Everything is destroyed. The industrial base is gone. The education base is gone. Everything is gone. And we have this crowd of which Malema is part of that trumpets out this racism narrative. Now, the cabal was clever in their plan because they knew that the Sasa generation is not the brightest sparks in the fire. And they are now capitalizing on that because these people find it hard to think logically or analytically. And the moment that anything goes against their pre-programmed beliefs, they don't hear it anymore. But it is sad for them because they are the ones that are going to pay the ultimate price. And they are too stupid, yes, too stupid to realize that they are being lined up for the meat grinder. So listen to what Gaten McKenzie is saying. It's the time to blame white people is over. Today I want to make a call to every white person. I want to say to every white person in this country, you can no longer be held accountable for the sins of your father. Join us to build a new country. We are not these people that blame white people for everything. That's an expiry date to blame your parents if they ill-treated you. They an expiry date to blame, to blame your ex-boyfriend. They an expiry date to blame your ex-girlfriend. It has expired. White people should stop being blamed for our incompetence. Singapore, Malaysia, Japan was built in three decades. Here, we must hear it's white people's fault. It's white people's fault. They, let me tell you today, patriots, you must never join a bandwagon of blaming white people. That time has expired. It is now unto us. The ANC has failed. If I was now, obviously, the Sasa militants don't want to hear words like that. They don't want to hear words like that because it rips the basis out of their existence, basically. But I am in discussion with some black people that are talking about things that go wrong and all of that and discussions and so forth. But something that is for me very strange is that there is a fixation on communism in them and they think that they must be judged differently for their actions. You must not judge their activities. You must judge that what inspires them, which I cannot understand. Now listen to Aikumalo and he raised a lot of heat with this 
he was on the panel show and then on that he made a lot of statements and social media was humming. But I'm going to play to you the, 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 a video of him in where he responds. This is a little bit long clip, but listen to what the guy is saying. Listen to what he is saying. Yesterday I was doing the panel show and uh, I mentioned that Uguchi apartheid was better than ANC democracy. Note that ANC democracy. And most people who dispute that are people who are not there. And some of the people, they come from the homelands where they were oppressed by their own black people. Someone will tell you that they didn't have electricity, but where were you? Because I can tell you, it was not always rosy, but in the townships which were governed by apartheid administrations, things were better than now. Yes, there was segregation, but if you went into a black hospital, you'll find all the necessities. If you went to a black school, you'll find all those things that you needed to find. Let me break it this way. Education. There were schools. Zama Ambar. Artisan, technical colleges, Abu Vista, designated for black people, but it was there. You go to some of the urban, you know, homelands under apartheid, like Abu Natal, you'll find universities of Fort Hare. You go to Goso Shanguve, Goso Trujel. There were, you know, facilities, infrastructure. That's why. In a township, you'll find a qualified plumber, a qualified technician, a qualified electrician, somebody who could fix cars with a certificate, and that person did a proper job, trained for free, Mahala, go Negro. We found those things. Art schools, they were everywhere. Go few, Bafunda Center. Every township had a hall. Sports stars were produced at auction, tennis players. Cyclists, Amakarateka, movie stars up to international level like Abu Zix Mugai, Ken Gamp, Abu Mira Makeba were produced during apartheid. You go to hospitals like Paraguanath, General, they produced, there was no shortage of medication. Road infrastructure, they see in Joyai today, produced during apartheid. We had our own things. Mm. Our own humanity, our own churches that we owned, where people are not, you know, robbed, made to kiss snakes. We had our own things, businesses, movie theaters. We had those things. And then people who've never lived under apartheid, they will tell you otherwise. People who lived, you know, oppressed by their Bantu stand leaders. So, you know, what? I'm talking about, I know apartheid. I've been inside an apartheid jail. Apartheid had shot and fired bullets at me. I know friends who died during apartheid. Mm. Schools were proper. Mm. Whatever that white people had, we also had our own. Even though it was not at par. Mm. I'm a pools, like about Jake. You know, with the three townships, maybe they are sharing one swimming pool. Olympic size, boxing house, even beer houses, because they need our much. We heard those things. We had our own Miss Black South Africa. Everything that white people had, we also had. It was separate development. Today there is none. We had jobs. We had business people. Also for song. Every township go kids good name. Every township. There was, you know, a tycoon like one. People were driving about Jaguar, XJ type, BMW, own a coal mines, not coal mines, cold houses, some of our houses. We had those things, but things are my last. During apartheid. Much hmm? almost on, produced during apartheid, but I don't know what it is. Oh, my Lombo de Chab, what case I'm down. They were there, owning our teams. Hmm? It was tough, but we had those things. Houses. There were people who were buying houses. There were people who were renting. But they will fix your toilet, your windows, everything. 99 year lease. 
But after 99 years, you own the house. Mm. There were limitations. But in whatever spaces that we found ourselves, <laughs> we were thriving. Yes, there were poor people. Mm. And you would be arrested for not working. Like in any society. Now, there are poor people everywhere. Mm. Everywhere. The only people who are thriving are politicians and Zionist dogs. And then somebody's going to tell me, you know, what is he talking about? We had electricity, so we had to Orlando. Yes, you know, the rollout maybe was not as fast. But people, maybe was good towards December. Put us man down. Hmm? Was a Friday. Hmm? Nobody, Christmas is not every day. Hmm? Ah, it. We had those things. During the era, I will my cop. I will very the ghost. Every township under apartheid. Remember, we had four provinces. Nama Pantustan, homelands. And I can tell you, even those Pantustan, like Abu Putatuana, they were better than now. Abu KZN, better than now. Napago hmm? Toyando, hmm? the so called puppets, they governed this country better than this ANC democracy. When I'm saying apartheid, was better than this ANC Democrats. I'm not saying it was good, but it was better. Imagine that. And I'm telling you, I will not lose this debate. Even if losing, I were to pay for your life expenses for the rest of my life, I will take that shot. I'm telling you, the apartheid was better than ANC Democrats. We produced, imported. Today we're buying more from outside. I'm a chicken. Obama flooded us with chickens, we importing toothpicks, we had industries, our textiles. People were working, create we had trains, things that were built during apartheid. Tamalam Bilspana, La Pago Passa Fabens are attack. Now unfortunately that is the type of truth that the social generation don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that. It blows their brains. But again, they do not have the ability to engage logically and objectively. They can only shout slogans. Kill the bull, kill the farmer. Crap like that. They don't realize where they're going. This uh, BLM movement of a few years ago placed the spotlight firmly on one specific reality. And that is everywhere in the world where blacks go, they need special treatment. They need special protection. They, they demand affirmative action. That is how they operate. They are a protected species. And they must have these protections. Otherwise, they cannot exist. That's the problem. Take South Africa. I think something like about 170 laws on the books that prevents me as a white guy to freely compete in the economy. But they are in denial about that. Those laws are there to protect 96% of the population against 4%. What does it say in reality? What does it actually say in reality? That that 96% is so weak, they are so incapable, that they need special protection against 4% of the population. Where does that make sense? But, let's get a bit further. There's another narrative that are being pushed about how many thousands of blacks were killed by apartheid. Always, they call, they bring these numbers, thousands, thousands, thousands. Fuck knows where they get it, but they talk about the thousands that were killed by apartheid. But they don't have the ability to go and do some investigation for themselves. Now I want to read to you an article by Juju Mkise. He was the SRC president of the University of Cape Town. Listen to this. The shocking truth about racism. 
How the hell can we believe you, Mr. President? South Africans are psychologically sick as a result of the violence inflicted upon the majority of the country's people during the apartheid era, President Jacob Zuma said. This lie is getting really old. The history of black South Africans has always been that of violence, death and destruction, not inflicted upon them by white people of this country. Now that's already enough to make a saucer generation brain explode. Shaka Zulu, during his 10 year reign, butchered more than 2 million black people in South Africa not counting the deaths during mass tribal migrations to escape his armies, he had his warriors clubbed to death upon, upon the merest sign of weakness. He neither took a legal wife nor father the son for fear that his heir would plot against him and had his concubines executed if he discovered they were pregnant. When his mother died, he massacred thousands of his subjects to their, so their families would mourn along with him. Shaka retained his throne through the worst kind of sheer terror, vast mass executions, torture and mindless butchery. His brother Dingaan was no better. He took power after the assassination of Shaka and started his reign by butchering those loyal to Shaka. And I have spoken about this in some of my skit marks. The things, the skip marks are talking about tribes. The blacks, the Sasa generation, do not understand what happened in history. The big problem is a large portion of this Sasa generation is tribeless. They've got no connection to their tribes and they are basically cosmopolitans. They, they don't have a culture anymore. They are typical subjects for the Triple X. That is what they want. They want people that has got no cultural ties and no tribal ties. That's what they want because those people are confused and they can control them. Back to the article. That amongst many other horror stories of black on black violence is the history of black South Africa. During the apartheid years it was not better. Factional fighting and tribal conflict was again the main cause of violence and death among black South Africans. During the apartheid era from 1948 to 1994, the average life expectancy of black South Africans had risen to 64 years, on par with Europe's average life expectancy. Infant death rates had by then been reduced from 174 to 55 infant deaths per thousand, higher than Europe's but considerably lower than the rest of the African continent. The African population in South Africa increased by 50%. Deaths due to political violence during apartheid, Truth and Reconciliation Commission. 21,000 people died in political violence in South Africa during apartheid of womb. 14,000 died during the transition process 1990-1994. Take note of that. So that leaves 7,000 that was killed prior to 1990. This includes South African Defence Force actions, for instance the 600 deaths at Kasinga in Angola during the war in 1978. Of those deaths, the vast majority, 92%, have been primarily due to Africans killing Africans, such as the intertribal battles for territory. During the period June 1990 to July 1993, a total of 8,580, that's 92%, of the 9,325 violent deaths during the period June 1990 to July 1993 were caused by Africans killing Africans, or as the news media often calls it, black on black violence, hostile killings in Qatar Freedom Party versus ANC killings and taxi and turf war violence. Look at that. 
But the narrative among the Sasa generation is whites killed thousands of blacks during apartheid. The security forces caused 518 deaths. 518. That's 5.6 percent throughout this period. During the transitional period, the primary causes of death were not security forces nor white right-wing violence against blacks, but due to black-on-black -black necklace murders, tribal conflict between the ANC, IFP, bombs by the ANC, and PIC's military wings in the shopping centers, landmines on farm roads, etc. In this country today, under black rule, as many, many as 18,000 people are murdered every year, and those are the official statistics. More than 400,000 people have been murdered in South Africa under ANC rule. 400,000. The past 20 years have been the most violent in the history of this country since the death of Shaka Zulu. And none of it has anything to do with white people or apartheid. But I guess if you repeat the lie often enough, foreigners actually start believing the drivel coming from your mouth, Mr. Uneducated President. Unfortunately, people from all over the world believe the lies you have spread and wrongly blame the whites for racism. Now that is the truth and the realities and the facts, but the sausage generation will reject it. The fact of the matter is, and I've said it in one of my previous skit marks. These blacks that are fueling the fires for a racial war, for in other words, they are fueling the fires for civil war. They have got a fucking idea that it will be 60 million blacks against 4 million whites. They don't understand the underlying reality. They like to see South Africa in two groups. Blacks, one group. Whites, one group. What they don't understand and never think about is this black group that they so fondly refer to as the black majority. That thing consists out of a murderable lot of ethnic groups. I think 11. And those ethnic groups is made up of a lot of tribes and all those tribes have got their own clans. So that's not a unity that they're talking about. The conservative side on the Zulu of the Zulu nation is just as fed up for the ANC as what the Buddha is. Same thing. The problem is that Zulus they're not going to hunt whites because it's not whites that has been sidelining them. It is not whites that has been robbing them of opportunities. Not whites. But blacks. ANC blacks. So, the truth and the reality is if civil war would break out in this country, there's nothing. The government don't have the tools to stop it or control it or contain it. And they will bring in peacekeepers, but that's a subject that I have spoken about. The problem is the violence of black on black is going to be horrific. Horrific! You can see it. What happened now in Cape Town with the taxi strikes? That Sosa, that Sosa Brigade destroyed and destruct schools and libraries and municipal buildings in black townships. They robbed, looted, killed black people. Think about that. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. Thank you for your support.